I don't know how to break this to you, but if you really want a nice tropical vacation, Paris is not where you should go. Hi, I'm Mike Siegel. I'm an astrophysicist. I write for Ordinary Times, and this is The Throughput. So it's been a while. I've been uh, busy with uh, a lot of other things, and I am working on a long video that will tackle one of my favorite subjects. But I thought I'd throw up this video as a kind of short to look at a little bit at one scene in a movie and what it gets wrong about astronomy. The movie is 1994's Interview with the Vampire. The plot goeth thusly. Uh, Louis is converted into a vampire by the vampire Lestat. He then converts the girl Claudia into being a vampire. They betray Lestat and uh, travel all over the world. When they come to the city of Paris, they meet a bunch of other vampires who, when they find out how they betrayed Lestat, entomb Louis and do this to Claudia and her nurse. One of the things that the movie keeps with vampire lore is that sunlight is fatal to vampires and so this destroys them. The problem with this scene is that the sun will never be overhead in Paris. Not ever. In fact, the last time the sun was overhead in Paris was about 250 million years ago when Paris was part of Pangaea, the supercontinent, and was located closer to the equator. To explain why this is the case, I'm going to have to... Uh, use a couple of, of props here. And I'm sorry, I don't have a globe right now that looks good on camera, so uh, we'll have to go with the basketball. Let's imagine the basketball is the Earth, and this is the sun. If the Earth just were facing the sun and not tilted at all, the sun would only be overhead at the equator. As you move further south and further north from the equator, the sun would get lower from overhead, but it would only be overhead when you were directly facing it, when you were at the equator. Of course, the Earth is actually tilted on its axis about 23 degrees. This is why we have seasons. Let's say you're in the northern hemisphere up here. When the Earth is on this side of the sun, you're tilted towards the sun. The sun is further overhead. The rays that it shines down are more intense and it gets warm. That's why we have summer. Whereas if you're in the southern hemisphere, the sun is lower on the sky. The sun's rays are coming in at a lower angle and the sunlight is not this intense. You can check this for yourself by just taking a flashlight and shining it over your hand and seeing that when it's directly overhead, the sunlight's very intense. When it's down low, light is very dis uh, dispersed and not as intense. This is one of the reasons, in fact, solar power doesn't work as well in the winter. People think it's because it's cold. Solar panels don't care about the cold. It's because when the sun is lower on the horizon, that energy from the sun is less intense. Now, when the Earth moves to the other side of the sun, now you're on the side of the Earth that's tilted away from the sun, so the sun is lower on the horizon and it's winter in the northern hemisphere, whereas in the southern hemisphere, you're tilted towards the sun and now it's summer in the southern hemisphere. Where the sun is overhead will have some variation. If you are less than 23 degrees longitude south, the sun will be overhead at some point during the year, at two points during the year. The line where the sun will be overhead the maximum point where the sun will be overhead is called the Tropic of Capricorn because the sun will be in the constellation of Capricorn or near it when uh, it is at the maximum overhead in January. Now, when you go to the opposite side of the Earth, the sun sort of moves up in the sky, reaches its maximum point overhead of 23 degrees north latitude. That is the Tropic of Cancer because the sun is in the constellation of Cancer at that time. Anything between plus 23 and minus 23 latitude, the sun will be directly overhead at some point. Paris is at plus 48 degrees latitude. It is very far north, and so the sun will never be overhead in Paris. It's not tropical. The tro when we say tropical in astronomy, what we mean is those areas between the tropics. Paris is not tropical. The sun's never going to be overhead. In fact, it will never get closer than 25 degrees from overhead or about two thirds of the way up the sky. And if you're at the bottom of a deep well, that means the sunlight is never going to come directly down. 
So this scene, while well done and horrifying and sad in its way, is wrong science. This is never going to happen. This would be a terrible way of killing vampires. So if you ever need to kill a vampire and you are in Paris, putting him at the bottom of a well is not going to work. Now, this scene particularly is annoying because one of the most important experiments in the history of astronomy involved the sun shining down a well. One of the myths that is promulgated is that Columbus proved that the world was round. Educated people in Columbus's time knew the world was round. It had been proven to be round 2,000 years earlier. Columbus, being an idiot, had argued that the world was much smaller than everyone thought, and so he could sail around the world. He didn't, no one knew there was a continent there that would a, he would accidentally crash into. It was 2,000 years earlier that the astronomer Eratosthenes proved that the world was round. What he noticed was in the Egyptian city of Syene, at a certain day of the year, what we call the solstice, June 23rd, when the sun reaches its maximum height in the sky, the sun would shine directly down wells in the city of Syene. And obelisks would not cast a shadow because the sun was directly overhead. In Alexandria, however, to the north, the sun was never directly overhead. It never shone directly down wells. Obelisks always cast a shadow in Alexandria. This doesn't make sense if the world is flat. If the world is flat, both cities should have the sun directly overhead at the same time, where if the world is curved, you would get that difference between them. Now, I've linked in the description a wonderful video from Carl Sagan who explains this experiment way better than I ever could. And it's one of my favorite videos of all time. I've referenced it several times on the blog. I reference it in class. So go ahead and click that link if you want more details on what Eratosthenes did. But the important point is this is kind of galling because the sun not shining down a well in Paris is one of those proofs that the world is round. So unless Anne Rice's uh, horror movies have a flat earth, this uh, scene shouldn't work. Now I realize this is not science fiction, it's horror, it's got vampires, but it's still one of those things that uh, kind of annoys you a little bit as an astronomer. And one of those things that, uh, you know, they could have gotten right. There were other ways they could have done this or they could have set it in a different city that was between the tropics. They could have set it in Syene. Uh, later books did involve vampires in Egypt, so you, you could have done that. So again, this is a little short video just to uh, give you guys something to chew on. Uh, I'll be back again in a couple weeks, hopefully, with a really long video uh, tackling a subject that's close to my heart. But until then, I'm Mike Siegel. I write for Ordinary Times. Enjoy science and movies, and thank you for watching.